Welcome to Imagining a Linked List. I am Seish Gopal, and this is part of a series of lessons on data structures and algorithms. In this lesson, you will learn how to build mental images of linked lists through pictorial drawings and computer memory representations. This will enable you to develop a clear conceptual foundation of linked lists, which will help you greatly when you program them in applications. Okay, let's get going. We'll begin with the simplest of linked lists, one that has a single item. A single item linked list has one node. A node is an object that holds data and points to the next node in the linked list. So let's throw in some data, say the integer 25, into this node. Since there is only one item in this linked list, there isn't a node that follows this one, which means this node does not point to anything shown by a backward slash. So now you have one node with 25 for data and nothing after it. There's one thing left and that is to be able to get to this node, like this. Front is a pointer that refers to this node. Now let's look at a linked list with two items. The first node has 50 in it and points to the next node which has 25 in it. The second node points to nothing. The first node has front pointing to it. And you see that there is a single entry point to the entire linked list, and that is through the front pointer. Starting with the front pointer, you can follow the sequence of node pointers to work your way through all of the items in the linked list. Here's the linked list with four integers. You will notice a few things that are different in this picture than in the previous linked lists. First, in the AD node, the data and pointer parts have exchanged places. Second, the 40 node, whose pointer points to nothing, is to the left of the AD node. Third, the pointer from the 25 node appears to point to the data part of the AD node. And the pointer from the 80 node appears to point to the pointer part of the 40 node. You may have also noticed that in the single and two item linked lists, the pointers appear to point to the data parts of the nodes. But these are all simply optical illusions. In reality, you must think of a node as a box with two things inside the box, the data and the pointer to the next node. All pointers, including the front pointer, point to the entire box, no matter where they touch the box. Okay, now that we know how to imagine a linked list, let's see how to step through the entire list one node at a time so that we can enumerate all the items in the list. This is called traversing a linked list. The entry point or gateway to this linked list is the front pointer from where you start the traversal. You follow this pointer to the first node. Once you're at the first node, you can get at the data part or the pointer part. For example, you can print the data part. When you're done with whatever you want to do with the data part, you can advance to the next node along the pointer from the first node. And so on. Until the last node. Now that you have seen how a linked list can be represented in pictorial form, it would help to know how it actually appears in memory. This will be extremely useful when we start programming with linked lists. A node is an object, and like any other object, it is located somewhere in memory and occupies a certain number of bytes. Here is a node that holds an integer and points to nothing. Each location in memory has an address. Suppose the node object is assigned space in memory starting at address 2000. In memory, the data and pointer parts will be stored right next to each other. The relative order of these two parts is immaterial. Either the data part comes before the pointer or vice versa. By convention, data is located before the pointer and we'll stick with this convention. In Java, an integer occupies four bytes, so the first four bytes starting at address 2000 is occupied by the integer 25, the data in the node. In other words, the integer 25 occupies addresses 2000, 2001, 
2002, and 2003. Now for the pointer. In Java, a pointer is nothing but an address to a location in memory. So the pointer part of a node is the address of the next node. All memory addresses in Java are stored in 4 bytes. So in this memory picture, the pointer part of the node, i.e. the address of the next node, is stored in the locations 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. If a pointer points to nothing, as in this case, the address might be considered to be zero. This is called a null pointer. So there you have it, a node stored in memory. Since addresses are numbers as well, they are written in slanted green to distinguish them from data integers. Now let's add a front pointer so we can get to the node. In other words, adding in a front pointer will give us a linked list. To reiterate, here's a node in memory. But a node in memory by itself is not of much use. We need to have a way to get to it, such as via a front pointer. Now, front is a variable that itself occupies space in memory at some location, say, 2024. And this variable will hold the address of the node, which is 2000. Our single node linked list is now all set to be used, accessible via the front pointer. Notice that once we get to the location 2000 via front, we can access the data 25 starting at 2000, as well as the next address starting at 2004, which is right next to the data. All right, let's take this up a notch and add another node to the linked list. This will require us to extend the memory representation to store a two-item linked list. Let's see how. We saw this example earlier of a linked list with two data items, 15 and 25, in two nodes. The linked list is drawn slightly differently here, vertical instead of horizontal. But, as you saw earlier in the four item linked list example, the pictorial representation can be drawn any way you want as long as there is a single chain of pointers that takes you all the way through the linked list nodes. So what does this two node linked list look like in memory? Let's start with the previous example of the single node containing 25 with a front variable holding its address. We need to add the node containing 50. Say we find a place for it at the address 1984. The integer 50 will be located in the first four bytes starting at 1984. The next four bytes starting at 1988 will hold the address of the next node, that is the address of the node containing 25. That address is 2000. So we have now linked node 50 to node 25. There's one more thing to do, and that is to change the address in front so that front points to the 50 node instead of the 25 node. This means instead of 2000, front must hold the address 1984. And that's it. Okay, we're almost done. There's just one thing left before we finish, and that is a small review exercise. We saw this four node linked list earlier. The exercise is to draw a memory representation of this linked list, following the process we used for the single node and two node linked lists. You can start with the two node linked list of 50 and 25, and extend it by adding the nodes 80 and 40. Well, that's it for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. See you later.